Hello, Dear in a Club. This is Andy Licht, live from Big Bad Con, speaking with Takuma Okada about solo RPGs and her work as a creator. For those who don't know you, Takuma, would you please uh, introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Hi. Um, yeah, I'm a tabletop game designer and musician. Um, I really like making games about exploration and about places um, and like moments of the sublime, things that are like so big and so like wondrous that it's like hard to comprehend, uh, big magical moments, things like that. And I like contrasting that with uh, kind of slice of life moments, little moments, little details, um, everyday things that you know might not necessarily uh, get the spotlight as much compared to those bigger things. And, I think having those things together really makes storytelling really interesting for me. I love that. Okay, so the grandeur of life combined with the mundane. So what and what games um, have you created? And uh, yeah, what, 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 what games can you uh, claim to your name? Um, so for Alone on a Journey, uh, it's a collection of three solo games uh, that uses a deck of cards and a six-sided die to explore planets, uh, an ancient city, and a shifting forest. And the way that I bring that in there is that I contrast, you know, something like exploring an alien planet and coming across like this flying dinosaur creature, um, you know, with iridescent scales or something, uh, while you're just like you're making dinner. Uh, is a role that can happen in that game. And I think that combining that like mundane bit that the player can like really relate to and step into very easily makes the reaction to those kinds of like bigger moments more real. Right. I so feel that. And, and I do think Alone on a Journey has the capacity for both uh, cozy and mundane moments and also these really expansive moments. What inspired you to make the game in the first place for Alone on a Journey? It was a combination of playing uh, the video game No Man's Sky and being kind of disappointed in the exploration. Um, I think this kind of dates back to like Spore also because it had that like space kind of stage but you know like in video games there's only so much you can do when you're like procedurally generating a bunch of stuff where it might not necessarily feel like there's a surprise around every corner. There's a couple cool things here, and it's like, it is cool how procedural generation works, but I wanted more freedom, and I wanted to be able to, like, craft something and, like, keep that kind of, like, sense of wonder. Um, and I played that game, and I feel like the next night or something, I just, like, spent the whole night just writing it. Um, and I was drawing a lot on, like, my experiences hiking in, like, New Hampshire uh, and, like, Glacier National Park and trips back to my grandparents' place in Japan. Mm -hmm. and, like, being outside and, like, exploring the world as a little kid and having that sense of, like, wonder. I love that so much. No Man's Sky, going for hikes, all perfect inspirations, and they really do come through in the game. What made you choose to make this a solo game then? And had did you have any experience with um, solo or journaling games beforehand? Or was Alone on a Journey your first foray into that medium? Um, I had some experience reading solo games. Um, the one that comes to mind right now is Brave Sparrow by Avery Alder. Cool. And I think reading that early on as a like, oh, this is a thing I can just like play and think about uh, on my own and the kind of like freeform nature of it really had me thinking about solo games and that combined with like improv exercises that I had done in a, mm. in a class before, like the one where you pull an object out from under a chair and you're like examining it and you're like, what color is it? How heavy is it? Um, that kind of exercise, which is like, you know, just trying to imagine these like senses alone. Um, those kinds of things kind of tied together and made me think it would be cool if you could just like come up with this stuff a little easier and if there's a little more 
structure around it and you could do even like weirder stuff like alien planets right right i feel like having the um guidance of, of a game of a solo journaling game is just that added uh like catalyst that's needed to turn it from freeform imagination or or larp or whatever it is into something that feels a bit more tangible that's like this experience that you're having there, actually, I just remembered, I did, my very first game that I wrote was about picking things up off a beach. No way. Um, which was inspired by, like, beach cleanup days, like, when I was a Boy Scout or whatever, you know, when I was little, um, and going to the beach and, and just, like, there's all sorts of weird stuff out there, and it's kind of fun to do, like, yeah. you're cleaning stuff up, you're finding weird things, you're, you're feeling like pretty good about yourself and you're like especially when you're doing it with a bunch of friends like um but just that moment of like seeing something in the, in the sand and like uncovering it um and like looking at it closely and wondering where it came from mm -hmm. uh, and like how it got there i think that carried over into alone among the stars because i think that was the next thing i wrote after that understood it sounds like between the beach game beachcombing game and alone on a journey that a lot of your work is fueled by curiosity, by looking around and exploring and being inquisitive as well. What games or projects or even parts of life are um, inspiring you now to make games? Where are you finding inspiration? I've gotten really into photography. Cool. Um, and I think that has really gotten me to um, try a lot of different Daddy. angles to a thing and like look a little deeper. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of the earlier stuff there, there's a lot of, sure. oh, there's this view, oh, there's this thing. Like it wasn't so much about really like getting into a thing and like being more detailed um, and those kinds of like small, small details and nuances and wanting to know more and more deeply, uh, I think is what I'm more interested in now and like building that up over time. I love that. Yeah, the photography sounds similar to like the beachcombing in a way where you are uh, inspecting something, but you're doing it from different angles and you're, you're yeah, just having like a natural curiosity about that thing. Um, on that note, are there any, are there any uh, games that you've played recently that you have stuck out to you in the uh, RPG space or solo RPG space? And beyond that, um, and this could also be your game, do you have any projects of yours that are upcoming that you'd like to highlight as well? So either uh, other folks games or anything of yours that you want to share, what games are you excited about right now? Well, for something that can be played solo or like as a quick one shot with a couple of people. I really like There's Always Dust by Tim Busatil. Okay. Um, which is about wizards that are fixing up these massive towers that are kind of the infrastructure of the world. Um, Whoa. It's a pretty simple kind of roll on a d6 table for prompts uh, in a series of scenes kind of game, but I think the those details about the world that it brings up and the way you think about how people exist in this world um it does an incredible amount of work with like a very small game okay um and that was called there is always dust there is always dust interesting and um i'm excited for like i'm excited for speed mech by uh, aaron lim which is a uh, tactical mech game which is very fast uh you just do you kind of decide what moves you're doing and then you roll initiative to like figure out the order of those moves and they just kind of like execute you can do a couple things in between but uh it's a very fast combat fun game um love it which i have been more interested in lately um there's been some like Souls or <laughs> inspired games. Like, uh, Love it. I'm really interested in Hollows, and there was that monster. Oh, 
Oh, I don't remember the name, but like you can transform between like a human and a monster. Like an Animorphs type thing? Sort of, but you kind of like, you beast mode, you like beast uh, mode like, out. And like Ben 10 style, yeah. kind of. Okay, okay. Uh, it might have been Wilderfeast. Oh, Wilderfeast, yeah. yeah. You, it's like the you are what you eat type game. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I think there's more like really lightweight tactical... Um, but like very, still very narrative, like combining yeah. those kinds of like combat mechanics and, and narrative stuff together. Um, yeah, I think there's a very, very real and exciting intersection between those two things. So I'll, uh, I won't keep you, but I just have, I have two more questions. My first one is, before I let you go, what advice would you give to uh, new designers? Oh, uh, write a small game, write small games first. <laughs> Don't just jump into a big project. Or if you, if you do have a big project you're working on, uh, either make some smaller complete games uh, on the side or try condensing your big idea into a small part that works on its own uh, and see what that's like. Because it feels good to finish a game and yes. uh, scope creep, scope creep creep is really real it's so real no i love that advice so much if you can do a small game then you can move up to a big game you know um no i think that's incredible advice definitely make something you can finish don't get burnt out and uh yeah yeah follow your curiosity um on that note where can people find you online uh, if you want to be found uh where can we where can we find more of you my games are at noroadhome.itch.io. I am going to be releasing uh, Blade Breaks, which I've been playtesting at Big Bad uh, there very shortly, which is a narrative tactical combat type game. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen to the rest of the internet. I don't know. I'm <laughs> okay. at Takuma Okada or No Road Home or some combination of that in those places. So Love it. And Takuma, would you, um, real quick, you mentioned a Blade Breaks. Um, what, 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 what is the elevator pitch for that game? Because I'm interested in it for sure. <laughs> And I'm sure other people want to know what works you have in the pipeline, so. Okay, Blade Breaks is about having a an arsenal of weapons and tools and things, and there being forces that are bigger than you and that are very terrifying, like Imperial Courts, that you have to fight against using everything that you have. And it might not be enough. Things are going to break down. You're going to get hurt very badly. You're going to put the things you love in danger. Hmm. And it's using things like the other kind dice system and some Forged in the Dark trappings and also uh, Delver 2nd Edition by Natalie the Knife. Uh, it's taking lessons from all of those things and kind of combining them to, to put this like very story forward combat experience forward. Love it. Okay, it is a game about working, working with little against overwhelming odds, it sounds like. So, super cool. Hope I get the chance to play that this con. Thank you so much for your time, Takuma, and we will catch you later.